What are we doing here? You'll see. Hello. What are you doing here? You'll see. Yeah, in there. What's going on? Close your eyes. Please. Quite in the same league as your Valentine negligee, but... <laughs> Times have changed, Nick. Mother don't all us at custody these days. Look, Elsa's got Alice with her at the moment. That's the problem. She doesn't have to fight for custody because she's already got her. Well, you'll have to do something about it, then. But I shouldn't have to. Look, I've looked after Alice by myself for the last two and a half years. It's not that simple. What you need is a solicitor, like it or not. <sighs> Shouldn't have to. Look, everybody knows Alice is best off with you, so you'll get her back without any trouble. You've just got to fruit formalities, that's all. It isn't right. And it weren't right that I were given a duff dog, but I were. Just look at that. There's more goo in a stoplight. <laughs> Who do you reckon I should go and see, then? Who's handling your claim against the airline? Damn, my bishop's sorting that out, but I could do with seeing somebody local. Perhaps Cathy knows somebody. Yeah, I'll ask her later. She's due back. Today? Yeah. Well, it's all right, sir. Does she know I'm stopping here? Yeah. She don't, does she? <laughs> Look, Cathy wouldn't want you living in that shed, right? Anyway, do, do you think I'll get legal aid? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Anyway, I've got to take him to see Zoe. She's opening a practice up this morning. I've got to convince its tradition that first customers three. <laughs> All right, well, good luck to you. Just wish it was so easy with legal aid. Well, I best be off. Marvellous, isn't it? Jack promises Alan Turner he'll check the builders at the wool factory. It's Muggins here, ends up doing it. It's called Community Spirit, Jack. Is it? What's yours going to be called? Thought of a name for it yet? Has to be Valentine, doesn't it? Belated Valentine would be more appropriate. Too much of a mouthful. How about belated? <laughs> Frank, he's wonderful. Thank you. I meant the horse. <laughs> mm. I'm only here because Vic keeps going on at me. That's making me worse. All I need is some Valium or Diazepam just to calm me down for a few days, if you don't mind. Mrs Windsor. That's not going to solve your problem, is it? Oh, yes, I think so. I mean, I don't want to be any trouble, so if I could just have a prescription, I'll be off. I've had it before. It's done the trick. Why don't you just relax? Tell me what's bothering you. Well, I've just got a lot on my mind at the moment, and I just need a bit of help relaxing. I'll be all right in a few weeks, if I could just have a bit of help. That's what I'm here for. Look, why don't you tell me what the problem is, and then I can help you? I'm only asking for an antidepressant. I know that's all I need. But don't you see? That just treats the symptoms and not the cause. Tell me what your problem is and let's solve it. It can't be solved. Let me decide that. No. People know that you're here. Don't worry, you've only been open 30 seconds. I know, but it's just I stuck my neck out with the firm's partners over opening this. I really have to make it work. You will. We will. Yes. Nick? Come 
wrong. What are you doing? You poor little thing has Nick left you in the bath. Hey? He had another dodgy call this morning. Who did? Pollard. Somebody phoned up and when I answered it, they just rung off. They didn't even say anything. Uh, Michael, people get dodgy phone calls all the time. Why do you make it sound so sinister? Because it's him. He is sinister. He's fooling everybody. You're fooling me. Suppose he is up to something. What's it got to do with you? Hey? Right? Look, I'm serious. Why are you torturing yourself over him? Let him get on with it. And let him get away with it? Yeah, why not? He'll come unstuck at the end. You'd be better off concentrating on finding yourself somewhere to live and forgetting about him. <sighs> I can't. I just can't get it out of my head that he killed my mother. Look, Michael, I can go along with the fact that he's a, a small-time crook, a, a bent auctioneer, a thoroughly rotten person all round, but to accuse him of murder, he, he's going too far. I'll show you. I'll get some proof that'll make everyone take it seriously. You're gonna make yourself ill, and that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> I won't. I can't afford to be ill. I've got to get him, and I will. What time do you finish at the surgery? 12.30. Well, I'll meet you then, eh? And then I'll let you know if I find anything out about Pollard. All right. Michael, think on, eh? Is it worth the worry? Oh, yeah. Well, you are a mystery, you are, aren't you? Hey, fancy Nick leaving you in the bath. I can't imagine what he's playing at. Do you want something to eat? Do you want something to eat, eh? What's in there? <laughs> you clever thing. How did you know these were in here? Do you want one? Come on. Come on. You haven't left a friend up there by any chance, have you? Hey? You're still registered with a doctor in London? Yeah. Why? You say you've been prescribed antidepressants. I do need to know why. Now, if you give me his name and address, I can send for your records. And if you want, you can be registered here. Well, it's only a short-term thing. I mean, can you treat me as a, a visiting or temporary patient? It's not as I'm asking anything out of the ordinary, is it? The air disaster didn't just affect those people who were physically injured. There were mental scars as well. Now, is it the kids in the therapy? I do notice that when you come along here, you do seem very uptight. It's just a natural worry, isn't it? I mean, once the kids are all right, I'll be all right. Viv, if I may call you Viv. Yeah. You know, I do understand if you're feeling a bit embarrassed when you come to see me. We're neighbours, we live in a small community. But let me assure you that nothing you say, and I mean nothing, ever gets repeated outside of this surgery. I know what I need, Doctor. I'm sorry. I'm not in the habit of prescribing antidepressants as a matter of routine. I want to help you, but I can't. Not until we get to the real problem. I don't need a psychiatrist. I just need some pills. Mrs. Windsor's in there with Dad at the moment, and, well, I'll leave you to it. My boyfriend's coming up to see me. Is she uh, signing on with us? I don't think so. Uh, Mrs. McQueen? I wonder what's wrong with her. So, uh, how long is it since you've seen him? Oh, ages and ages. A bit special, then, is he? Yeah, he's the one. Oh, don't be daft. You're far too young. Oh, you don't know him. Seth, come in. Thanks, Lou. I don't know where Nick is. Uh, do you know who this little chap belongs to? Aye, me. <laughs> Any idea what he was doing in my bath? I don't think he can reach his shower. No, Nick said he'd clean him up a bit before I take him to the right surgery. Oh, I see. She's opened up the practice now, has she? Just today. Well, that still doesn't explain where Nick is or why he left him in the bath. He's a clever dog, you know. You have the biscuits in that cupboard. He's got a keen sense of smell. 
But I think there might be something wrong with him. I suppose we're going to see his voice. Oh, what a shame. Has he got a name? Charlie. Charlie. Oh, well, hello and goodbye, Charlie. <laughs> he certainly feels at home here. He's, uh, he's very adaptable. Ask this to him. Well, I take it you know the situation. Aye, I do. I'm sorry to hear it. Mind you, a lifetime in a wheelchair is tragic, but he could have been killed that night. Well, Chris doesn't see it like that. I'm going over to see Frank later, you know, to work out the practicalities of having him home. Well, if there's all doubt and go, you want me to ask. Thanks, Seth. There you go. I can't get over him knowing about those dog biscuits. <laughs> I'm trained him well. Mm. <laughs> I'll see you, love. Yeah. See you, Seth. Come on. No, you won't. You're a very busy vet. <laughs> Hello, veterinary surgery. Could you hold the line, please, and um, I'll see if she's free. It's the police. They want you to go down to the wool pack. Thank you very much, Mr. Bettinson. Right. Yes, of course, I'll tell him. OK, bye. That was the police. They want you to go to the wolf pack. They found something they want you to have a look at. You're going to do some work with a the bike then? No, I've got to open the shop in half an hour's time. Anyway, your mum's taking you up to Emmerdale to see Samson, isn't she? Yeah, Joe Sugden's going to teach me how to groom him. Why do you have to bother with the shop when you've got this place? Mum could look after that. Don't let her hear you say that. As far as your mum's concerned, this is just a bit of a sideline. Does she know you've bought it? Well, I haven't actually laid out any cash for it. I'm just flogging off stuff for the owner's widow. I'll own it eventually, though, when I worked out some sort of deal with her. But don't say nothing to your mum. she got enough on her plate as it is. Yeah, why's she getting into me, though? Well, I think she's just worrying too much about you and Donna and the therapy. How's that going, by the way? It seems right to me. You sleeping any better? Yeah. I still dream about the horses burning, though. So do I, son. So do I. You'll be standing there for a while if you're waiting for the pint, won't you? Not a drink we're waiting for. It's news of a skeleton. What? It's true, the builders have found a skeleton in there. Not in a cupboard by any chance. Now on the floorboards. The beast of Beckingdale. Well, whose skeleton is it? Builders found it, so it's theirs. No, I mean, who is it? Well, I don't know yet. Could be an ex landlord. I think one went missing just after it was. It's human. <laughs> it can't be a landlord then. Any idea who it could be? Well, Ben McAllister thinks it's quite old. He's sending for the coroner. Oh, well, I'll have to wait for the next bulletin. I'm off. See you later. I, yeah. yeah, I have to get back too. In case I have a patient, a live one. Well, you've got one. Him. I'm just on my way to see you. All right. Well, you'll be my first client then, sir. Oh, I suppose there'll be a special offer then. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm off too. I've got skeletons of my own to unearth in Eric Pollard's cupboard. Well, I suppose we'll find out who it is eventually. Makes you shudder, though, to think it's been underfoot for years and years. Anyway, shopping must go on. See you. I'll uh, see you, Sarah. How did you go on at solicitors, then? Nick. Nick, what's up? What? You were miles away. Just, just brought it all back to me. It's not you disappearing before my eyes. Well, don't dwell on that. How did you go on at solicitors? People can't just disappear like that, Seth. They can. Archie did. But you have to think at future and Alice, not at past. Now, what about the solicitors? Well, uh, I reckon I'll get legal aid. Well, that's a good start then, isn't it? The only problem is, how's it going to look to court if I don't have a proper home? It's not your fault an aeroplane fell on your house. And any road, you'll be all right. The scat is home. Oh, and talking about being yeah, homeless. Seth, look, I'll have a word, don't worry. But I don't want to impose, and I mean that. I'll be all right. 
All right, and what's the alternative then? The gamekeeper's hut? I just don't want Cathy put out. And I've made my mind up, and that's that. Seth Armstrong, you can be a stubborn so and so, do you know that? Come on. It's only an old piano. It's not, you know. It's a pianola. What's that? Well, it's better than a piano. Anyone can play with. How come? Oh, I'm not quite sure how they work, but. Oh, yeah. There's a roll of perforated paper, and I think you pump the pedals madly and the rolls go round. Surprisingly good nick, though, isn't it? Will it be worth anything? Well, that's the beauty of rummaging round a place like this. You never know. You can understand him being depressed. Oh, He's got to adjust to a whole new lifestyle. No, of course I understand. I. I just feel so helpless about it all, Frank. Now, that's where we can help. I've already talked this over with Kim. I'd like to suggest a purpose-built bungalow, somewhere close to here. All the equipment he needs for moving about, wide doors, ramps, everything to make his life as easy as we possibly can. Sounds perfect. How close to here were you thinking? As close as you like. You just say the word, and I'll have the pans drawn up. Oh, great. Well, that should cheer him up. Good. You get your cottage on the market and we're away then. Hi. Hi, Cathy. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. I was just explaining to Cathy about our bungalow idea. Oh, I hope you haven't been uh, too, what should I say, overwhelming. What do you mean? Well, let's just say that sometimes your enthusiasm leaves the rest of us behind. For Cathy and Chris to decide where they're going to live. I know that. I haven't been domineering, have I? See? I only want what's best for all of us. I know. Is it serious? Well, it could be. Depends on you, really. Me? His back legs are weak, which is why he lies down all the time. And he's anemic. In other words, I've been given a dud. I'm afraid so. <laughs> I see me get it run to litter at my age. What can I do about it, Zoe? TLC? How much is that going to cost? <laughs> as much as you want. It's tender, loving care. That's all he needs, really. Good food, gentle exercise, affection. Just like the rest of us, really. <laughs> the first sign of trouble out of you, and I'll have you put down. Can you hear me? How much do I owe you, love? Well, seeing as you're our first customer, you just tell people we're here and we'll call it quits. Do you think I should be on some sort of commission? <laughs> All right, I'll tell him. And oh, thanks. I'll see you. See you. You'll never get rich like that. Oh, I don't know. Seth will do us more good than a full-page ad in the Veterinary Times. <laughs> All right, you can go whenever you're ready. Right. Can I ask you something? Yes, of course. What is it? It's it's about a friend of mine. <laughs> no, no, honestly, it's it's Michael Feldman, actually. I might as well tell you. And what's the problem? Well, he's become obsessed, thinking that Eric's up to no good. Eric Pollard? Yeah, I mean, he might very well be, but Michael thinks... Thinks what? I, I know this sounds stupid, but he thinks Eric killed his mum. No, she died as a result of the air crash. Yeah, I know that. Everybody knows that. But try telling Michael. I was wondering if he was suffering from that post-trauma thing. Post-traumatic stress disorder? Yeah. What do you think? Mm, I don't know. I'd have to talk to him first. Do you think you could get him to come in? <sighs> Probably, but I won't be able to tell him why. I'm scared he'll flip and have a real go at Eric. Michael can be very fiery. You were away together, weren't you, at the time of the air crash? Yeah. Yeah, I know what's going through his mind. Because for a while I thought, if I hadn't been away, perhaps Mark might still have been alive. Or you might have been killed. Fate said that you lived, Rachel. Yeah. I know it's irrational, but I can't help thinking that way. Try and get him to come in and see me. Now, that's all you can do. OK. When's the baby due? Six weeks. I bet you can't wait. Oh, let's just say I'll be glad when it's over. 
What doctor do you go to? Dr McAllister. He's very good, I find. Oh, he probably is. I just find it a bit odd with him being a neighbour as well. Is there another surgery close by? Mm, not really. You'd have to travel eight or nine miles. Well, don't you think him being a neighbour as well is an advantage? I find it embarrassing. <laughs> He's a doctor. You shouldn't be embarrassed. Aren't you on his books, then? No. So where's this other surgery, then? Oh, it's over in Skipdale. I should give Dr McAllister a chance before signing up with somebody else. No, I couldn't confide in somebody I see every day, in the streets, in the pub and that. I just couldn't. I mean, sometimes you need to talk to somebody and know that it's not going to go any further. Oh, well, if it's just a good natty you need, I'm always available. And I can guarantee discretion. I might take you up on that. Well, there's no time like the present. I mean it. Well, I just feel... I just feel that sometimes I need just... Oh, I don't know what I mean, really. I suppose everybody's got secrets, but... I mean, sometimes I feel as if they're going to explode inside unless I talk to somebody. Sounds fascinating. If you ever want a woman-to-woman -woman talk, it'll go no further. All right, Sarah, how's it going, then? Fine. Is the kids still up at Emmerdale with Joe? Yeah. Do you mind hanging on here a bit? Sure. Is she all right, Vic? Yeah. I think she's just worried about Scott and Donna, you know, with all this therapy business they're going through. Well, we're all going through. You're welcome. It's great to see you. How long have you got the house to yourself? Not long. My dad should be home any minute. I haven't got long, then. Why? Oh, Danny, he's not going to throw you out when he comes in. He might. You might. I don't know what's going to happen. Why, Danny? What's up? You know I love you, don't you? Well, I hope so. Danny, what's wrong? Everything, if you say no. No? What are you talking about? Jessica, I know it's not practical, and I know we'd have to wait until I finished university. But I want to get married. I want us to get engaged. Oh, Danny. Yes, of course. I love you. 